I started the day thinking I was going to get the control cable handles in place and the fuel pump. Things turned out different. These are my control levers. Base needs a good clean up. I'll probably take the levers off that base and give it a good wire brush. We'll come up alright I think. Fuel pump, mainly just dirty I think. That's just mud on it. It'll get a bit of a wire wheel and a clean and mount it up. I think I'll mount that up so that the petrol lines are run underneath the rubber mat before that control levers are bolted down. I thought I'd just show the actual uh, engine stand I'm using without the engine in it. That's the handlebar. I bored a couple of holes in it through the gut so I could store the handlebar. This is the rear piece of rear threaded rod and I use the actual rod for the front engine mount and the front engine mounts up there. Series of just self tapping screws in the side. All that electrical stuff attached to it. The battery box and screws in the front and more screws in that side. This is a screw that stops the handlebar rotating. But yeah, just thrown together at the time. And now I've got the uh, pieces that allow it to be tipped over onto its left or right side, which is handy option as well. So I'll put that aside ready for the next engine I pull apart. The fuel pump brushed up pretty nice. I haven't taken the pump itself apart. But I was able to get the wire wheel in or a toothbrush. There's a little bit of dirt there I've missed. I might have another go at that with the toothbrush. But uh, otherwise, that's looking pretty fresh. I'm going to mount that back on the bike. I'm not too worried about testing it at this stage. It's easy to get off if I think it's not working. Or once I've got hoses on it, I can suck and blow on them and see whether I can get any action. Even the screws polished up pretty good for it. That's mounted back on there with its nice rubber mounts. I gave it a bit of a suck and puff on the uh, vacuum line side. I could hear the uh, diaphragm working inside. There's little reason for that to be faulty because it's not the reason the bike stopped. And although what fuel was in it at the time is probably dried up inside it, and there may well be a bit of residue from dirty fuel that's got through the straws at some stage. I don't think it'll stop it working. I'll do a little bit more testing once the tubes are on it and it's connected to the uh, petcock. See if I can suck some fuel up through it. What's wrong with this picture? That there just snapped off. The side of the uh, petrol pump when I was uh, trying to jam a fuel hose on there. It's interesting this side is cast with the base metal and the other side has brass fitting in there. That's because there's like a, a check valve at the end of that piece and a spring and things inside there and I think it must screw in there. This side has just broken off. Sets me back a little bit in time at least. What I'm going to do is drill through here and tap maybe M6. I've even got an M7 tap and die I believe depending on what diameter that is turn up a new brass piece now that my lathe's working to screw in there and then I might lock tight it in to try and fix this rather than just dispose of the petrol pump. I actually do have a spare tested on a previous video. It's a bit rusty. It came off the 88 bike but I think it works. If this doesn't work I've got something to fall back on. This is a nicer looking pump if it worked. And I don't want to just chuck it away. Oh, 
for those that haven't seen my other videos I've had to open this up now that that spigots sheared off there's some dirt in the bottom of the chambers I regard this as like a, a heart pump where there's a left side and a right side and the fuel's drawn from the front here to the back chamber and then passes from the back chamber across to the outlet side which is the right hand side there and then the valves are identical pretty fine dust in the bottom there we're going to take the rear chamber off looks like there's enough meat in behind this outlet tube here see there's just a fine hole going through drill and tap similar but there's the spring and uh, relief valve there's a ball bearing in the end there for those who haven't seen my other videos but uh, yeah I'm going to take that rear cover off and it gives me a piece that I can sandwich in the vise a bit easier rather than trying to clamp across a pentagon shape well this is new to me rather than having a spring and a metal part activating the center of a diaphragm this petrol pump has a clear plastic diaphragm of some description I don't know whether that's an aftermarket thing or whether it's common to these well this is a 96 pump and I've only had a part 88 and 94 pumps in the past it was pumping I was sucking on it and it sucked fuel through from the fuel pump so this works that, that spigot broke before I uh, had settled on it now you can see the dirt that's collected around this goes up this way so that's the lower side of the fuel area the, there shouldn't be dirt on the other side of that diaphragm because that's just connected to the vacuum so that's more dirt that I can clean out and is probably a useful exercise for opening this pump up that's the uh, back part there this is the center part that's the front where there's two chambers and at the back there's just a one chamber an inlet and an outlet and the valves are identical just back to front so now I can clamp this piece in the vise around this way with that vertical tap out a larger hole to fit a brass fitting that I'll also machine and tap I'm centered up over that port where the spigot broke off I put a little bit of a countersink in there this is a five millimeter drill it's a tapping size for M6 I'm going to take, run that through next that's it drilled out to M5 I'm going to run the countersink down there to help guide the tap and also leave a V where perhaps a uh, small o-ring may help seal it up against the shoulder on the brass stem that I screw in there later that's an M6 tap I'm trying to keep it nice and square Been pretty good from what I can see in X and Y there so I'll run that down gonna judge it a little bit to see whether a bit of taper on the tap I might stop short so that it does jam an M6 and, and lock itself in to some extent this is the tap handle I was making bits for the carburetor from I put an M6 thread on the end of it it's about 10 millimeters of thread little hollow for an o-ring I used an 8mm end mill to give us a flat spot there for that o-ring to tighten up onto the shoulder on this is also 8mm so it sandwiches that o-ring pretty well I've been juggling the thread so that it actually tightens in the thread before it crushes the o-ring too much which is about there there's a 3.5mm hole up the guts of that 
in there 30 millimeters at this stage. That's the pump back together with the new spigot on it, the O-ring. It's got a bit of red Loctite holding it in. Probably take me half a day to fuck around with it, but why not? What's retirement for? This is a vacuum tube connected to the vacuum port on the back of the petrol pump there. I've got the in input lead going down to the petcock and I've got the petcock just set on prime at the moment. If I puff on this, Oh, that's working. Uh, my uh, little spigot on there is connected to that bit of plastic tube, spitting fuel. I purposely looped it up like that because I wanted to see that it's actually pumping higher than well, the, the, the fuel has got to come out of the petrol pump, probably go a fraction higher than the petrol pump and down to the down to the um, carburetor. If I hold that down here, I think I was looking like a siphon before because that's now as low as the petcock and probably lower than the fuel. There's only a couple of inches in the fuel tank. Probably siphons out So I'm thinking I've set up a siphon there. Now if I raise that tube, yeah that's probably above the, it's siphoning there. I'm thinking that's siphoning because that point there is lower than the petcock over there. If I raise that, I reckon that's probably now above the fuel level and it's stopped. The carburetor lives up higher than that. Unless you've got quite a bit of fuel in the petrol tank, it won't siphon into the float bowl. And the float bowl, it should be stopped by the float needle valve. Fuel, if anything, has run back to the tank because it was higher than the fuel level in the tank. Yeah, I'm trying to get to the bottom of why crankcases fill full of fuel. Well, today turned into a fucking science lesson. Get out to your shed and have some fun.